CSS filters are the weird and fun part of CSS. I've been doing design and code for a long time. I mean, I I actually used tables in layouts for paying jobs in the in like the late 90s as a teenager. And the reason why I bring this up is just to illustrate that I've seen a lot of changes in the industry. One of the changes about coding websites that excites me more than anything is the fact that we are less reliant than ever on graphic editors to create production assets for our websites. What I mean is like, you know, there was a time where if you wanted a box shadow, you had to create nine little pings, you know, and cleverly place them around the box to create a box shadow look. It was just frustrating and difficult, but really we didn't know any better. You kids have it so, so good, you, you have no idea. Now you just write one line of CSS and you have this awesome dynamic box shadow that you can, you know, tweak and, and change on the fly. It is seriously magic, like border radius, gradients, like it is, it is a beautiful world that we live in right now. And it keeps getting better. Today we're gonna to be looking at the next evolution in browsers taking work away from graphic editors. Today, we're gonna to be looking at CSS filters. Let's jump in. Before we start looking at the CSS filters, let's talk about browser compatibility. As we look at this chart here, uh, we can see that there is some pretty fair support if you're discounting IE and Opera Mini. Chrome goes way back, Firefox goes back two versions, Safari two versions, Opera one, Android is current. Um, IE, no and Edge, so keep that in mind when you're going to be messing with this stuff. The reason I'm showing it to you today is not necessarily because I expect you guys to be using this stuff right away, but that they're so cool that you should be aware of them. I started first started messing with them about three years ago. I've never used them in a live project, but they're just they're like a really awesome thing to be aware of, and I think that they will in the future change the way that we. Um, design and style our websites. So with that introduction and keeping this chart in mind, let's go to our code. So there are a bunch of CSS filter properties available to us and it really depends on how we want to use uh, them and in which combination that we can have some really interesting effects. So uh, in terms of our setup here, I have um, an image displayed on the right. It's being borrowed from Gratisography. And then right here, I have a, a comment with all of the uh, available properties of the CSS filter. And then right here, I have an image with a CSS property and value of blur. So uh, let's un uncomment this blur and you can see right away, our first filter is taking effect. We have a blur and blur you can use any length. So here's two pixels. We can change that to 20 pixels and we're gonna get a blur. This is a Gaussian blur. It works similar to how it does in Photoshop that if you think of a pixel of the image um, and then you wanna blur it, it's gonna like choose the radius of like so that the 20 pixels that I'm taking is like how far I want the mix to go. So right here is gonna be uh, 23 pixels. This will be two pixels. This is how far you want the mix of the blur to go. And turn it off, you'll see it go back to nice, tight, crisp image. All right, so that's that's a blur filter. You can use, um, you can use inches as well, because why not? Uh, 0 0.2 inches. Um, and you can use all, all those kinds of lengths. Okay, so that's blur. Let's go to brightness. You're gonna use um, from one to 100, 100 being completely bright, uh, zero being completely black uh, or dark or not bright, and so 50 being pretty bright too. But you can see how uh, using these, these uh, integers, I'm able to change the brightness. Of this of this image, we can also use percentages. So let's say four percent is going to be a lot less, but 40, 40 percent bright. It's going to be pretty dark. Uh, One hundred percent bright is going to look like exactly what it should be. And then I think you can blow it out by going beyond one hundred percent. Okay, that's brightness. So let's say contrast. Contrast is similar to brightness. It'll take the same uh, inputs being percentages or numbers. Let's change it to 500 contrast. It's very con high contrast. And we can also turn the contrast down by lowering it below 100%. So if you want like a really cool like hipstagram filter, you're probably gonna use this a little bit. Next one we're gonna do is grayscale. 
Grayscale will uh, desaturate the color. So you can still see the red because we're at 50% here, but we, if we go to 100% Grayscale, it'll knock out the red, all the color completely, turn it into a black and white image. 0% uh, Grayscale is gonna give you full color. That one's pretty simple to understand. But you can also use numbers as well, and we're gonna use numbers from zero to one. So if it's like zero, it's gonna be completely full colored, and then one is gonna be completely black and white, but you could say like, uh, 0 0.5 to have that that half right so it's going to be numbers or percentages with grayscale next is invert invert uh, will invert the color so 100% invert it's going to reverse all of the color so um, everything on the color wheel remember your color wheel we'll just jump to the other side of it and th what's interesting is that you can do percentages of invert which is really funny because if you hit 50% invert everything will meet in the middle of the color wheel, which is just like a 50% gray, just nothing. Um, but on this side of the invert, you're just kind of going closer to gray. And on this side of the invert, you're coming further away from the gray center towards the edges of, of a full invert. Next thing is opacity. Opacity, right now it's completely opaque. We can take it down to 70% opaque. Now this is the, completely the same as just saying um, regular opacity like 0 0.7. Why would you use one over the other? Well, you don't really need to, but an interesting thing is that using filters, sometimes browsers will hardware accelerate them, so um, using filter opacity at some future point might even be a better idea than using opacity because um, the browser will be able to handle it better because it's hardware accelerated, meaning that your CPU is handling the um, opacity instead of the browser itself. Just a small detail, not really necessary to worry about it, but you know, it's something that, that you could consider in the future. Uh, next, let's talk about saturate. Uh, right now we're at 70, we can go to 40 and it's desaturating. You're, we're, we're sucking the color out. If we get down to 0%, it's gonna be completely black and white. So 100% is what like the, the image naturally is and then we go beyond 100% to get a really saturated kind of like poppy look. You'd use this in an Instagram filter as well. <laughs> Next, let's talk about sepia. A sepia image is, is, has like that yellow kind of stained, kind of old feel look to it. It's a very specific filter. I mean, you could probably recreate it using uh, a combination of these filters. You can turn it down by doing 50%. So you do something like this, and then like maybe an inset box shadow, and then all you got, you all of a sudden you have an early bird filter from Instagram. All right, let's jump to the next one. Hue. Rotate. Now this is an interesting one because we're no longer using, see all these ones were done with, uh, you know, lengths or percentages or numbers or percentages. This one is going to take an angle. So you're going to say degrees. And what this does, if you can imagine the color wheel and you're, you, have a, you have a pinpoint at like true north and that's the color that you're at, all the colors map to that, we're just gonna rotate the color wheel and your, your pinpoint is gonna stay there and we're just gonna kind of rotate it around. So how many degrees are we rotating it will result in how far the hues kind of like move, right? Keep in mind, we're talking about the, the three uh, attributes of color of HSL. We're talking about hue, saturation, and lightness. Lightness is how bright it is, which, which is the brightness uh, filter here. Saturation is the saturate filter and hue rotate is that one. So it's interesting, you, you can, and also, um, a for opacity. You can you can cover all of the HSLAs right here, and it's a very interesting thing. But a hue rotate is 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 really a, a unique one. You can have a lot of fun with it. It's pretty cool that they they, they included that there. So you're going to use angle with hue rotate. Now next is drop shadow, and drop shadow takes the arguments similar to what box shadow does, uh, which is going to be offset from the top and bottom zero pixels. Uh, 20 pixels, and then we're going to talk about the blur, which is going to be like 30 pixels, and then the color black. So you see this box shadow here? It, it looks, I mean, this is exactly the same as a box shadow. So why would you use filter over box shadow? Well, um, there's a really, really interesting and useful attribute of filter is that it will not just look at the shape of things, but it will look at the alpha channel as well. So for example, I made this image right here of the DevTips logo and it's just a white ping. But because it has an alpha channel going on there, the drop shadow will conform to it. So this is a ping image and you see it's just a white 
uh, logo of DevTips and we can change the drop shadow of it. See what's happening there? 60 pixels blur. Let's say, let's just change it back to 30 and then let's change the opacity here. Uh, RGBA, want to be 000 black and 0.4. Lighten it up a little bit. So you can do a lot of interesting things. You can add um, drop shadows to text. You can add drop shadows to images. You can add drop shadows um, to CSS shapes. And this is a little bit more robust and intuitive than box shadow, which will just outline you know, the CSS box that everything is in and put a drop shadow on. Like for example, if I were to put this in box shadow style, you would just get the square of the image. But, but um, filter drop shadow does a whole lot more to enable, you know, like how, how well that, that drop shadow is actually applied to the image in the way that you would think it should be, you know? Really cool. So these are all the awesome things that filters can do. And one last thing I want to mention is that you can actually load up your filters and do multiple things at once. So for example, let's say contrast, I'm gonna bump up the contrast there. Also blur it a little bit by uh, three pixels. And we'll also uh, take the hue rotate over a little bit by 20 degrees. So you can do all that in one CSS filter declaration and you can just keep on adding them and making like really interesting effects with, with images. And uh, you can also do these with SVGs and a few other things. But this is a basic introduction to uh, CSS filters. If you love CSS filters or you're just excited about the prospect of using them soon, holla back in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video and it has in some way impacted the way you work or the way that you think about work, you should consider becoming a patron of DevTips. Patrons are the beautiful people who pledge a dollar amount of their choosing to the channel for every video on Monday. They make it possible for me to do things like afford recording software or take you guys along with me to conferences and meet new people. Patrons also receive perks. For a list of those perks, check out the link in the description below. Thank you for exploring the exciting world of CSS filters with me. I will see you next week for the last video of 2015. And until then, keep on hacking and whatever that means to you.